Hello and welcome. The first man to fly supersonic in level flight died in December 2020. That was Chuck Yeager, you would know that. He overcame the pain of two broken ribs in order to fly. No one remembers the name of test pilot Chalmers H. Slick Goodlin. He flew the X-1 aircraft to near supersonic speeds many times, but became a footnote in aviation history when he lost the right to shatter the sound barrier for the first time. Goodlin was born in 1923 in the USA and began flying lessons at the age of 15. In 1941, he joined the Royal Canadian Air Force, hoping to get some combat experience and go to England. After America entered World War II in 1941, the US Navy recruited him as a Navy test pilot. Bell Aircraft chose him as their primary test pilot for the X-1 in 1943 because he was considered the best of the breed of military pilots. Goodlin was one of many pilots who flew Spitfire aircraft in 40 missions in defence of Israel in 1948 and 1949. Back in the USA and after 26 flight tests in the X-1, Goodlin was on the brink of making the first supersonic flight when he resigned over a contract dispute. Civilian pilots were paid bonuses for dangerous test work and the X-1 series test flights were dangerous. Bell Aircraft Corporation, the plane's manufacturer, refused to pay him the requested $150,000 bonus for the milestone flight. The military subsequently took over the program and Jaeger achieved stardom on October the 14th, 1947 at Muroc Army Airfield, which is now Edwards Air Force Base. Jaeger risked his life for his regular captain's salary of $3,396 a year. A bit different to $150,000, eh? For the rest of his life, Goodland remained bitter about his lost opportunity and he and Jaeger feuded publicly. Goodland accused the Air Force of using the disputed fee as a reason to take over the program from Bell. He wanted the credit for breaking the sound barrier after he had done all the dirty work of shaking down the plane. Jaeger said he took the risky assignment after a British pilot had died in an early attempt. He said it was his duty as a military man. Jaeger told the Dallas Morning News in 1992 that Goodland was a good pilot who could have broken the sound barrier. Of the seven X-1s built for the first and second generation programs, three were lost to fires or explosions. One exploded on the ground taking the EB-50 launch ship with it. Goodland had several close calls. In one, he ran out of oxygen at low altitude and he removed his oxygen mask. The windshield, the icing system, was leaking isopropyl alcohol and caused him to lapse into semi-consciousness on approach. Goodlin survived and emerged groggy and with a hangover. On another flight, Goodlin had to cope with frozen ailerons. Bell built the X-1 to an astonishing 18G load limit. They tried to cover every possibility because so little was known about shockwave propagation. One was flutter, so the ailerons were fitted with flutter dampeners using silicone oil. At altitude, the oil thickened, combined with ice, and locked the ailerons. Jaeger had a better mechanical background than Goodland and the other Bell test pilots, Dick Frost, Jack Willems, Tex Johnson, and Gene Ziegler. Although taking research aircraft to the edge was done by military pilots, the Bell pilots endured just as much risk in testing new aircraft that had never been flown before. They had to test aircraft to the limits of the aircraft's capabilities to satisfy the terms of their contracts. And sometimes they did repeat tests on airplanes that had been handed over. In the X-1s, just flipping the engine switches on was an exercise in blind faith. The Reaction Motors XLR11 rocket engine proved to be fickle. It blew up a lot. A test engineer described developing it as hellishly dangerous and he would crouch behind a concrete wall wearing a football helmet 
during test runs. Jaeger once said he was relieved when he switched on the engine when they out an explosion. In 1957 and 1958, the X-1 was flown four times by a little-known National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics test pilot, Neil Armstrong. Yes, that Neil Armstrong. So, what would you have done? Would you choose immortal fame or hold out for the money? Thank you for watching.